I want to invite uh, Michael Senkin in of uh, the Memetics Group. I had a really nice conversation with Michael this week. We were talking a little bit about how this company functions, and I love the idea of ending the day with you because you're a private company, but you're giving, sorry, not a private company, public company, uh, but giving guidance to, of about 40 to 60 million this year in revenues. 56? 50 to 60. 50 to 60, okay, can we bump the range to 55 to 65? So, so uh, you know, really interesting. So you're really starting to see revenue being generated in this space, and this is the use of chorionic and amniotic membrane for wound healing. And what's really fascinating to me is this is operating through the FDA guidelines around uh, the homologous use, non-manipulated, autologous, uh, cell therapy. So I, I really look forward to hearing about how you're able to operate through these guidelines. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Jason. Uh, I was I was contemplating bailing out, but when Jason said this morning our guidance was 40 to 60, I had to stick around to correct that because I got emails from about 20 investors saying what's happening. Anyway, as, as Jason said, um, we, we are a high growth company that on, that's on a path to profitability. Uh, to give you a perspective, back in 2010, tissue revenue was 1.7 million. In 2011, it was 7.7 .7 million. Last year, it was 27.1 million in revenue. And this year, as we, we just uh, clarified, uh, our guidance is 50 to 60 million. Why is that, uh, why is that happening? I, I wrote down some quotes over the course of the day listening to different speakers. And, and Stephen Burrell at, uh, at lunch said, uh, if you're going to be successful, improve outcomes at lower cost. That's what we do. Uh, to give you an example, and I'll get into it in a, a bit more detail, uh, we have a uh, results of a randomized clinical trial related to diabetic foot ulcers, and we talked about that a lot today. Our healing rate is 92% in six weeks with a p-value of 0 .001. Now, that's dramatically different over the, um, the leading advanced technologies and therapies that are in the market today. The leading technologies today heal at a 30% rate. We heal at a 92% rate. So we are a publicly traded company. So uh, as everyone else said, refer to our 10 Qs and 10 Ks uh, for the risk factors. I know, by the way, I'm the chief financial officer, so most of my talk will be numbers-based as opposed to uh, uh, clinically-based. But anyway, my medics is a regenerative biomaterials company, ticker symbol MDXG. We're currently traded over the counter. Uh, we are moving towards uh, a national listing, and we'll have some announcements coming up shortly in terms of uh, where that will end up. We have several innovative technologies. Uh, technology platforms with multi-billion dollar market opportunities. We have generated rap rapid top-line rapid top line growth over the past two years and have four consecutive quarters of positive EBITDA. We have an experienced management team led by our chairman and CEO, Pete Petit. Pete was the founder of HealthDyne Technologies. HealthDyne was acquired by Philips Healthcare for over $5 billion. Pete also founded Matria Healthcare, which was acquired by Inverness for $1.2 billion. So we have somebody at the helm who has a track record of, of growing significant businesses. To that end, Pete has assembled a very experienced management team. Included on that team is Bill Taylor, our president and COO, who worked with uh, at Pete at Matria uh, as a successful business unit head. Our two tissue platforms are branded AmnioFix and EpiFix and are derived from a proprietary purion process which gently works to sterilize and dehydrate donated human amniotic chorion membrane. These tissues are regulated under Section 361 of the Public Health Service Act. We comply with the requirements of homologous use and minimal manipulation. The tissue is recognized for its effectiveness in enhancing soft tissue healing, reduced scar tissue formation, reducing inflammation, and is non-immunogenic. Those are important items to, to remember 
when we talk about indications for use. Because in our world, in the 361 tissue world, it all comes back to the tissue reference group, section 361, where they have specifically called out those four elements as being recognized properties of amniotic tissue. The key to its effectiveness are the numerous active growth factors, cytokines, and extracellular matrix proteins resident in the tissue. Our value proposition is simple. A purine process membrane is, highly, is a highly effective tissue, reduces time and cost to heal a soft tissue injury. So let's talk for a moment about our patented purine process. To date, there are currently five issued and 20 pending patents involving the process as well as various product configurations. The proprietary purine process delivers a product that is easy to handle and has a five-year shelf life stored at room temperature. Most other competing technologies are difficult to handle, have other logistical issues such as needing to be cryogenically preserved, have a limited shelf life, and are difficult to handle. To further validate the effectiveness of the purion process, as you can see on the screen, we conducted an experiment with an independent lab and tested fresh membrane against our purion process membrane. The test results show that the purion process membrane retained an essentially equivalent amount of important growth factors, cytokines, and inhibitors naturally found within amnion chorion tissue. Sorry for the gory pictures, uh, but uh, if you're in wound care, you have to show them. Our AmnioFix and EpiFix platforms address a number of unmet needs representing over $10 billion in market opportunity. AmnioFix markets include surgical, sports medicine, or orthopedic markets, to name just a few. The EpiFix platform addresses the wound care market, including diabetic foot ulcers, venous leg ulcers, as well as other procedures such as reducing scarring after Mohs surgery. Now let's talk about that randomized clinical trial. We recently completed a, a diabetic foot ulcer clinical trial. The primary objective was to compare the proportion of ulcers completely healed by membrane to the standard of care in 12 weeks. A secondary objective was to compare the proportion of healing at four weeks. The study was originally designed as an 80 patient study. The graph shows that the EpiFix, when applied every other week, healed 77% of the patients at the four-week time period with a p-value of 0 0.001. And then at six weeks, 92% of the patients were healed, again, with a p-value of 0 0.001. This was compared to a, the control group only healing 8% of the patients at six weeks. So now to my favorite subject, the, the financials. We break our revenue down into three categories, wound care, surgical and sports medicine, and other. In, two, in 2012, the $27.1 million in revenue was broken out as 42% being wound care, 48 being surgical and sports medicine, and 10% being other. In 2013, what is forecasted is that that percentage will actually reverse itself and the wound care segment of, of our market will be actually higher than the surgical and sports medicine side due to the accelerated growth on the, uh, on the wound care side of the market. So our revenue goal for 2013, as we said, is 50 to 60 million. And we go so far as to talk about 2014 where we believe we'll, we'll achieve between 90 and $110 million. The 2000 and 12 growth was driven by the Medicare Q code that went into effect in January of this year, expanding our reach into doctor's offices. In addition to that, we will have a full year's worth of revenue that we started in the second half of last year targeting uh, government accounts, including the VA. In the case of both the commercial and the government market, we've adopted a direct sales model, so we have our own sales force. In the case of surgical and sports medicine, we have a, a distributor and a third-party sales rep business model. One important note, and, and it was brought up in the, uh, in the regenerative medicine panel talked about earlier, it's not enough to just get a Medicare Q code. You have to go the next step, which is to get reimbursement. 
We're happy to, to report that at this point, we have gotten approval through five of the nine MAC groups for reimbursement on EpiFix for wound care. When we compare that to five other competitors who at the same time had a Q code granted, we don't believe any of the other five have gotten reimbursement from the MAC groups. That again speaks to the organization that, that Pete has built where we brought in individuals into the organization that know how to manage your way through that process. That's critically important to your success as you go forward. So to summarize MyMedics as, as an investment opportunity, we start out by saying we're, we're targeting very large markets. We're not just wound care. We are in surgical. We are in sports medicine. Uh, we haven't gone into it in a lot of detail here due to time, but there are tremendous opportunities in these other areas. We're a disruptive technology in terms of efficacy and cost. You can see that based upon our growth. The clinicians that we work with recognize the benefits of, of this product and are using it. We have low regulatory uncertainty because we are compliant under a 361 tissue. So we don't have to be concerned about, about getting through a PMA or a 510K. We have significant barriers to entry due to our, our patents as well as our, our intellectual property. And we have an experienced management team with a track record of, of growing uh, successful businesses. With that, I'll turn it over to Jason. Thank you. So, thank you. And I promise I'll keep this short. Now I'm going to turn it over to Ted Tentoff in just, just a minute to come over. But Michael, I have one question I just want to ask you. You know, it, it is a little bit controversial. You haven't run a, a quote unquote clinical trial. So, so and this is an, essentially an allogeneic product. Mm -hmm. So, but but the the product is not living tissue, mm -hmm. so so I'm just wondering are are there any plans to run kind of a clinical trial going forward or yeah I mean what happens if the FDA regulatory winds shift mm -hmm. and one day they decide that you don't meet the criteria for what is a homologous use? Okay, great question. A couple of things I'll, I'll point to there. Number one, we we've had two FDA audits in the last two years. The last one happened in July of last year, and it was specifically targeting, and again, I didn't talk about this, but we have a micronized version of, of, this, of this tissue, which used for sports medicine applications like plantar fasciitis or epicondylitis. They came in specifically asking the question, is this, does this solution contain living cells? And we said, no, it does not. We, we, through our period process, we retain all of the, the proteins, the cytokines, the growth factors, but they are non-viable cells. So first and foremost, we, we, we have the FDA who has already been in and looked at us and said, you're good. On top of that, we have at this point over 140,000 implants already out in the marketplace with not one single adverse reaction. And so we have seen other companies where, where they had gone down a, a Section 361 path and the FDA came in, and because they had been in the market and they hadn't had any negative experiences, the FDA gave them a period of time to, to gain a 510K. So we have that going for us. In addition to that, and again, I didn't mention this as well, uh, I showed you the results of one RCT. We have nine other RCTs that, that are in various stages of completion. And when we're done with, with those activities, we'll be more than compliant with, with the requirements coming out of a, a, a regulatory issue such as uh, uh, what the FDA is looking Michael, at. Michael, thank you so much for being patient and being the last company to present. And I hope that going forward, you'll stop flying under the radar screen and we'll get more <laughs> visible with all of the analysts on Wall Street. Thank you. I want to thank and everyone wanna, for sticking around. Thank, thank you. you. And, and I'd like to invite Ted Tentoff to come.